How did you get interested in investing specifically? And then who have been your mentors along the way? Uh, watching Power Lunch, actually. <laughs> That's the <laughs> right answer. answer. I, I knew I liked you. <laughs> it started with an E-Trade account. And um, my business partner, Rudy Klein Thomas, um, he was pushing me to learn more about the markets, learn more about what my money was doing, not just leaving it in the, into someone else's hands and trusting them to do everything, but to actually understand how my money was working. And he said, take some money, um, you throw, not throw away money, but money you can be more risky with and you can kind of play with and get an E-Trade account and uh, find myself starting to pay attention to what stocks were doing, um, watching CNBC, watching all my, the, the channels that I watch uh, on a daily basis now and, and knowing what's going on. It's a little bit of a competitive game, too, investing, right? Yes. Well, you have to uh, be up to date with what's going on, uh, understanding um, why the stock's going up, why it's going down, looking at earnings. Um, you start actually paying attention to the competitors, you know, watching the whole uh, sec sector or whatever that market is. Uh, you start seeing different things. You start to see how political influences are on each stocks. And, um, you know, that's what led me to get in earlier. You know, you, you mm -hmm. start there and then you see, well, how can you make more gains or where they're making the larger gains? And that's pre-IPO and that's, you know, different series of rounds of investing. Is that where you concentrate now? In other words, I'm sure people come to you with, uh, they, because they, you're well compensated and you would have money. Do you put more money into private deals than into the public markets? Well, no, I, know I, you, I know you have some private yes, companies that yes, you back. Yes, I have private companies. Uh, the majority is in, in the safer in, investment vehicles, uh, but I'll, I, you always have to tell yourself that, you know, when you invest pre-IPO, uh, no matter with Series A, B, C, or um, right in, in, in their first round, uh, that that's money that you're, you have to swallow that pill if it doesn't go well, or you, you could lose money. You know, you have to understand how the percentages work, and there's more risk involved with... Uh, invested in private companies. Um, so, you know, you have your diversified portfolio uh, and, and, you know, you're paying more attention to what's going on in uh, each investment. What stocks are in your portfolio now if we got a peek into your E-Trade account? <laughs> uh, Fang is big right now. You know, uh, like the, Fang. The, the, uh, the Facebook, the Amazon, Apple, Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, Google. Um, I had a really good conversation with Warren Buffett. We had lunch. I, was, I had that <laughs> unique opportunity. And he had some really good advice. He said, invest in companies that you'll know will be around in 10 years. And uh, when you look at that, I mean, how many companies are, are, you know, are around for 10 years that do really well? And that's, that's what he's done. I mean, he's, he's invested in yeah. the Coca-Colas of the world and, and the Burlington Northerns and all, and all of those companies. Uh, let's switch. You, well, I, I want to ask you why you have become kind of an evangelist among players for financial uh, responsibility. I'm sure you've seen guys who've gone out and burned through with 25 cars or whatever and, and, and lost a lot of money. Well, I'm an older guy, so... Yeah. Uh, 34. I've been, I've been able to uh, stick around for uh, longer than normal. I'm going into my 15th season, so I've been able to see a lot of different things. Um, I've been able to build a platform to where I've, I've known to be in the tech space, and um, I'm in a position now where I'm bringing other athletes along with me. So, you know, not only am I able to make an investment in a private company, but I'm also able to bring other guys in those deals with me and, and also give them that education. Did you, did you come into the league the same year LeBron did? A year after he did. A year after a year he, after he did. did. And you played the best defense against him that anyone has ever seen in a seven-game series. I tried to. That was 2015, right? 2015, yes. 2015. Yes. Y'all won that. Yes. Let's talk about the Nike ad. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, a San Francisco player, formerly, uh, is fronting an ad for Nike. You have been a Nike guy. Yes. Um, what do you think about it? Well, I think the, it speaks for itself. You know, he says, sacrifice, making a sacrifice to stand for something. And I think what's, what gets lost in translation is what this is all about. And at the end of the day, it's all about um, everyone being treated equally and standing up to an issue that we have within the African-American male community, which is the uh, abuse uh, that we've taken from uh, our justice system. And, you know, the, the many African-American men, uh, those that are even undocumented, that have been mistreated by uh, police brutality. And that's what it's all about. And it's not about protesting the national anthem. And we're bringing light to that. Sort of the same, sort of the same point that Mike Tirico made in our last hour, that some of the, of the point 
of the protest has been lost in the fog of controversy. Yes. Whether you whether you agree with uh, it or not, and and uh, but but at, but at any rate, from the from the business perspective, is it smart business for Nike to do this, or risky it, business? It's actually smart business. If you look at it, grand scheme, uh, culture uh, is moving product right now, especially apparel and. Uh, look at Michael Jordan. Everyone wants to have that Michael Jordan influence on how to move uh, sports apparel. And that was from the culture. With Michael Jordan, uh, Air Jordan basketball shoes, uh, you know, they, he, I think he sold $3 billion last year in just Michael Jordan apparel and shoes. Nike did. Just in Michael Jordan's side. And that's a cultural influence. And they're understanding that our community, the African American community, moves the culture, moves the thread when it comes to apparel. And that's standing behind that community that has put Nike in the position that it's in right now. What's it going to mean having LeBron in your division? It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> that means I'm going to, I'm going to see You're him. going to be working a lot harder. Yeah, I'm going to see him a whole lot more than I would like to. But actually, um, <laughs> you, you prefer to play against the best competition. So, you know, at this point, he's uh, arguably the best player in the world. Uh, he, he's probably the best player in the world. Kevin Durant is right there. I'm, I'm keep pushing Kevin to you know, uh, finally take him over this season. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. He's doing some great things in the community. Um, he's representing, uh, you know, not just himself, not just his team, but the uh, entire NBA and, and right. the endeavors that he has off the court. We'll so he's like back. a brother.